power and the freedom of mathematics is a flaming sword. It shall be our duty to use it justly. Hold it high, guard it well. Math Court, where common sense prevails. Math Court, with the Honorable Judge Sandra Day O'Crater presiding. Another outburst like that, and I'll have this courtroom cleared. Now then, you are accused of a mass crime. I'm innocent, Your Honor. Oh, that's what they all say, Your Honor. You know, I'm getting very tired of coddling mathematically inept persons who come before this tribunal. <sighs> Settle down, Mr. District Attorney. I mean, we arrest them for some math crime, and right away, they're back on the streets, perpetrating another. Do I have to sit here and take this abuse? No, you may stand. I tell you. Listen, young lady, don't you use a sentence with an exclamation point on the end of it in my courtroom again, period. Now carry on, Mr. D.A. Thank you, Your Honor. The accused made three purchases at a store on the 17th and refused to pay the full amount for them. Is that a true statement? Yes, every word. I bought a magazine, a box of candies, and an electric drill. Mm hmm. Bailiff, Your Honor, these were the costs. 250, 519. 3079. Is that true? Yes, it is. I was having a party. Objection, Your Honor. On what grounds? Statement is irrelevant, immaterial, and I wasn't invited. Objection sustained. Get on with it. Well, Your Honor, as you can plainly see, if you add up these figures, they come to a total of 3,848. Yes, I can see that. And yet, you young lady claim that these figures add up to a different total. Yes, Your Robe Ship, and they do. They add up to $38.48. Oh. Oh. I've warned the spectators before. Another outburst like that, and I'll ask the bailiff to open fire on you. Now then, let me ask the defendant to take a look at these figures. They do add up to 3,848. But, Your Honor, we were dealing with money, and the prosecuting attorney has not used a decimal point to show dollars and cents. Oh. A decimal point, you say? A decimal point, Your Honor. What is a decimal point? It's, it's nothing but a, a, a dot. I'll warn you not to use sentences with exclamation points on the end of a meter, young man. Now then, show me what you mean. This is how the numbers should have been laid out. $2.50 is 2 decimal point five zero. $5.19 is 5 point one nine and thirty dollars seventy nine cents is thirty point seven nine the new decimal points are lined up so that when you add the total is thirty eight dollars forty eight cents not three thousand eight hundred forty eight dollars you are absolutely correct decimal points may be tiny dots but they're very important so is common sense. Anyone should know that buying a magazine, a box of candies, and an electric drill couldn't cost $3,848. Use your head, for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah, well, it could have been a really big drill. Case dismissed. And once again, justice has prevailed in... Mom Court! Now, I'm warning you, don't you use sentences with exclamation points in my courtroom either. I love math. It's a subject you can really sink your teeth into. These two contestants, Nadia Richards and John Leader, will separate mathematical facts from fiction. Welcome to Square One Challenge. I'm Reggie Cathy. And now let's meet the host of our show, Larry Cedar. Thank you very much, Reggie, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, <laughs> see you later. Welcome to Square One Challenge. Gosh, we've got an incredible show for you today. We have some super questions, some fabulous contestants. Welcome to the show, John and Nadia. Good to have you here. Now, you know how we play the game. We're going to start you each off with 100 points. There they are. Let's get right to the first question. Here it is. Here are two candy bars of the same size. Now, we cut one candy bar into halves. Then we take one of the two halves, and we cut it into fifths. Now, the second candy bar, we simply cut into eight pieces, or eighths. Here's the question. 
Which could be bigger, piece A or piece B? There you have our first question for the day. And now with some answers to that question, let's go to our guests from Square One TV, Cynthia Darlow and Louisa Lachin. Welcome Hi. to the show. Hi, Larry. Louisa, what do you think? Which could be bigger, piece A or B? Okay, well, the candy bar on top is cut into only six pieces. So piece A is bigger than piece B. That's what I think. Thank you very much. And Cynthia? Well, the candy bar cut into eight would have bigger pieces. B is bigger than A. Cynthia says B. Louisa says a. Now it's up to you to decide if they are telling the truth or bluffing. Sometimes they both tell the truth, sometimes they both bluff. It's up to you to decide and you'll get 25 points for each correct decision. So think about it and write your decision down. Which piece will be bigger, A or B? You've had time to lock in your decisions. Nadia, what do you think? I think both Cynthia and Louisa are bluffing. You think both Louisa and Cynthia are bluffing. All right. Distrust from the star, yes. John, what do you think? I thought that Louisa was telling the truth and Cynthia was bluffing. You think Louisa is telling the truth and Cynthia is bluffing. Okay. Let's see how you did. For the first question, will the truth tellers please stand? <laughs> Cynthia was telling the truth and Louisa was bluffing. Cynthia, would you like to explain your answer? Sure, Larry. B is the bigger piece. Both candy bars are the same size. One half of the top candy bar is cut into five pieces, all the same size. If you cut the other half of the bar the same way, you'd have ten pieces of the same size. So piece A is one-tenth, but piece B is one-eighth of the bar, and one-eighth is bigger than one-tenth. There you have it, kind of tricky. Thank you very much, Cynthia and Louisa. Let's see how you did. Nadia, you weren't correct about Cynthia, but you were correct about Louisa. You'll get 25 points for that for a total of 125. Very good. John, you were not correct about either Louisa or Cynthia, so you'll get no points this round, but you still have 100 points. You're still in the game. Let's move on to our second question. It's a video question, so pay close attention to the monitor. Now, there were two winners in the Transylvania State Lottery last night. Mr. Ferguson Frankenstein won 1 million thousand gold lotties. Now, Irving Dracula won 1,000 million gold lotties. Here's the question. Which one of them won more lotties? Frankenstein or Dracula? And now for some answers. Louisa. Okay, Frankenstein did. One million is a lot more than 1,000. So, one million thousand is a lot more than 1,000 million. Okay, Louisa says Frankenstein. Cynthia. No, 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 no. Dracula won more Zlotties. Believe me, he won 1,000 million. Okay, Cynthia says Dracula. Louisa says Frankenstein won more. Think about it. Write down your decision. Who won more Zlotties? All right, you've had time to lock in your decisions. Nadia. I think Cynthia's telling the truth and Louisa's bluffing. You think Cynthia is telling the truth, with Dracula being the bigger winner? And Louisa bluffing. All right, John. I agree. I also had Cynthia was telling the truth and Louisa was bluffing. You agree with Nadia. Cynthia telling the truth, Louisa bluffing. Let's find out how you did with the second question. Will the truth tellers please stand? They were both bluffing. And if you'll pay attention to your monitors, I'll explain to you exactly why. One million thousand is the same as one million times one thousand. And 1,000 million is the same as one thousand times one million. Either way, you get the same product, one billion. Just like 3 times 4 equals 12 and 4 times 3 equals 12. Both guesses are wrong since Frankenstein and Dracula won the same amount. There you go. Let's see how you did. Nadia, you weren't correct about Cynthia, but you were about Louisa for 25 points, giving you a total of 150. John, you were also correct about Louisa only, 25 points, a total of 125. It's a very close game going into our challenge round. Now, you know about the challenge round. In the challenge round, you can bet part or all of the points you have on your board. You, in this case, have 150. You have 125. Now, I'll give you a hint here about this question before you place your bet. This challenge round question deals with ratios. It deals with the subject of ratios. So think about that, and then decide how much you want to bet and write the amount down on your wager board. Question deals with ratios. All right, here's the question. And remember, to win this round, you're going to have to be correct about both Cynthia and Louisa. So good luck. Chris has brought out with him the most interesting machine. Now you will see that on this machine there are three wheels of different sizes. They're connected by a belt. So when you turn one wheel, 
they all turn, as Chris will demonstrate. There we go, and there we go. Now you'll notice that wheel A has a diameter of 10 inches, wheel B has a diameter of 15 inches, wheel C has a diameter of 20 inches. Here's the question. If you turn wheel A six complete times, how many times will wheel C turn? If you turn wheel A six complete times, how many times will wheel C turn? Tough question. Louisa, what do you think? Okay, um, wheel C is twice the diameter of wheel A, so it will turn twice as many times. Two times six is 12. All right, thank you, Louisa. Cynthia? Well, it's true, wheel C is twice the diameter of wheel A, but I think that means wheel C will turn only half as many times as A. So I say three times. All right, Cynthia says three. That's the answers. Think about it and write down your decision. All right, you've had time to think about it. Nadia, what did you decide? I think Louisa's telling the truth and Cynthia's bluffing. You think Louisa is telling the truth and Cynthia is bluffing. Thank you, John. I think that Louisa is bluffing and Cynthia is telling the truth. You think Louisa is bluffing and Cynthia is telling the truth, exactly the opposite of, of what Nadia thinks. All right, this should be interesting. Let's find out. Will the truth tellers please stand? <laughs> Cynthia was telling the truth and Louisa was bluffing. Cynthia, would you like to explain your answer, please? I'd be happy to, Larry. Since C is a larger wheel, it'll take longer to make a complete turn. It's twice as big as A, so it turns only half as many times as A. Half of six is three. Uh, let's demonstrate. The big wheel will turn three times. Chris? Here's one. Two. And three. Thank you very much, Cynthia, and thank you, Chris. Now, you viewers at home, I want to think about just how many times wheel B would turn. All right, let's see how you did. Remember, you had to be right about both players. Nadia, I'm sorry you weren't correct about Louisa or Cynthia. Let's see how much you wagered. Five points. We'll have to subtract that, leaving you with a total of 145. Still a very good score. John, you were correct about Louisa and Cynthia. Let's see how much you wagered. And you wagered 50 points, which will add to your score, giving you a grand total of 175, making you our grand prize winner. Very well played game. We had some tough questions there. I must congratulate you both. Nadia, as our runner-up, we are still going to give you some great prizes. You get a really cool Sport Jester gym bag, and you also receive the all-natural laser hologram calculator, which is really neat. I've seen it. It looks great. John, as our grand prize winner, you receive a Square One jacket. You also receive a gift certificate for some sneakers and the still waterproof, after all these years, Square One wristwatch. So congratulations to you both, and thanks for playing. We'll see you all next time on Square One Challenge. That's a good joke, but I heard it before. Oh, hello there, wiggle worms. You say something has been nagging you in the back of the brain all day, and you just figured out what it is. It's your little sister's birthday, and you haven't got her a present. Remember last year when you forgot and she bit you on the patella, and you had to go to Brazil to be treated for saliva on the kneecap? And this year, she gave you plenty of warning and even told you what she wanted. And you said, 
no prob, and now it's getting late, and you gotta go out and find a place that sells hockey pucks. But first you look at the ads in the paper, and voila, an ad for a hockey puck for $4. And not only that, you get 25% off. So you slip into your Mackinac when suddenly you see another ad for hockey pucks. This one says, hockey pucks, $5 regular price. But because of a special sale due to a buyer's oversight, you can get 50% off. Can you believe the puck luck, Funky? Just when you're about to make a purchase, you've got to think. Which is better to buy? A $4 regular hockey puck at 25% off or a more expensive high-speed puck? $5 with a 50% discount. Time is ticking away as you ponder the problem and the canary's begging to be fed. So you feed it to the cat and now your little sister's coming in the front door and you can hear her teeth chomping. Is that what's ruffling your cowlick cousin? Well, lift your head up high and put it all together down that mask, thinking cat. Which is the better to you? 25% or four bucks or 50% or five? You know that 50% is one half and one half of five is 250. Now figure 25% of four singles. 100% is four dollars. 25% would be one dollar. So the cost would be three dollars. The regular hockey puck would cost three dollars and the high speed puck only 250. You go for the 50% off. Save money and get a better puck because you never give up, never give up, never give up on math and pucks. I do hope the little tyke scores a hat trick. Did you take that all in, Grover? The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Monday, 9.43 a.m., and New York was sweltering in a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. The temperature's rising. It isn't surprising. You certainly can, but that's another story. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Joe Greco. My partner is George Frankly. My name is Tuesday, a mathematician from a little town out west trying to get used to the big city back east. George, throwing dart? Uh-huh. Uh, the uh, first two were in the bullseye, Pat. They say the third one's a charm, Hard. Do they? Have a good weekend? No, thanks. Just had one. <laughs> That's just a joke, Pat. Sure, Martha and I, we had a dilly. Friday, we took in a concert. Eddie Murphy and the Rockettes. Saturday, we went to a benefit at the Gershwin. Benefit? Uh-huh, a Save the Urban Skunk Drive. Uh-huh. Last night, Martha went to a bridge lesson. Martha's learning to play bridge? No, build them. How about you, Pat? How about your time off? What'd you do? Laundry. Again? It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. You want me to get that? Get what? Math Net Tuesday. Of course we're here, Captain Greco. Where did you think we would be? Sure thing. The captain has a case for us, George. He's coming in? Uh-huh. You're not Captain Greco. I like a man who does his homework. How are my two favorite problem solvers? Hi, Benny. Fine. Good. Listen, have you seen a young kid named Stanley Swinning around this morning? Who's Stanley Swin? No. Mm. He's a student I'm teaching in my English class. You're teaching a your kid to be English? George. Actually, I'm teaching him journalism. We're on a school break, and for extra credit, I told Stanley he could write a feature about you guys from MathNet. Uh, is it OK? It's for the school newspaper. Happy to talk with him. Sure. Any journalist of yours is a journalist of ours. Buenos dias, amigos. Top of the morning, Skipper. Good morning, Herr Capitan. How are things in guacamole, Cap? Things are okay here, but things are in the soup at the Megalopolitan Insurance Company. Heard of them? Megalopolitan Insurance? Sure, I remember their slogan. Before you die, you'd better buy. What's up? Well, they've been taking a lot of hits on their insurance policies lately. Hits? 
pay out. Oh, of course, uh, paying out money on things that they insured that either got swiped or, or damaged. I want you to go to their HQ and talk with the president, Catherine P. Wilco. She's expecting us? Yep. Keep me posted. Where's the other door? What happened to the other door? Two darts is more than any man should need. Oh, there you are, Mr. Pell. Yo, Stanley, my man. Having trouble finding a place? Nah, I just had trouble parking my bike. Uh, Stanley Swinning, me Pat Tuesday, and George Franklin. MathNet. Pleasure to meet a member of the Fourth Estate. You're welcome to come with us, Stanley, but we do have to get going. A real case and I can go with? You mean? Right. Let's, Let's roll. roll. to Megapolitan Insurance, a rather successful New York City company. Boy, what a surprise. We're going to Megapolitan, sponsor of my greatest triumph to date. How's that, Stanley? Megapolitan sponsors the Wimpus Bike Show each year. Last year, Stanley won it. Congratulations. What is it, trick bike riding? Well, that's part of it. And relay races, dashes, they teach you a lot about bike safety. It's neat. We made our way to the plush executive offices of Catherine T. Wilcall. We made our introductions. You look familiar, Stanley. You presented me with a trophy last year at the Wimpus Bike Show, Miss Wilcall. I remember now, of course. This year's Wimpus is coming up Friday. Will you be defending your title? I certainly will, ma'am. Thank you for coming on such short notice. I'll get right to the point. We have been losing a ton of money lately. A ton? That's 2,000 pounds of money. She means a lot, Stanley. And we've lost all the money in one area. One area? Manhattan? The Bronx? And Staten Island, too? What I meant was, Megalopolitan insures many things. We sell life insurance, home insurance, fire insurance, boat insurance. We pride ourselves in featuring an instrument for your every need. What area of insurance are you getting roughed up in? Auto insurance. Cars? Our policy sales are up 2%. That should make you happy. Sales increases always make me happy. But claims are up 3%. Claims? The amount of money you've paid out? Exactly. Our payouts are up from what we'd expected. A 2% increase in sales, a 3% increase in claims. Not a big difference. But, Mr. Frankly, three is 50% more than two. Uh, good point. Have you noticed any patterns, Mrs. Wilcall? There seems to be some unusual activity in our Greenwich Village office, but nothing conclusive according to Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar? Our best insurance investigator. He found Zilch, so you called us? Yes, in the hand-wringing hope that you'll be able to help. We'll try, Mrs. Wilcall. The detailed information is in a file on this computer disk. We'll start at the beginning. That's sometimes a good idea when you're trying to solve a problem. You sent for me, Madam President? Mr. Dollar, these people are from MathNet, and they've agreed to help us on this case. I want you to cooperate fully. Well, that doesn't show a lot of confidence in me right now. Right now, I don't have a lot of confidence in you. Get me some results. <laughs> Mr. Dollar, we want to work with you, not against you. Well, I'm sorry if I got a little hot under the collar, but I just couldn't help it. Because if I get hot over the collar, then my collar stays sweat and my neck gets slippery. But I want to see this case solved as much as the next guy. Unless, of course, the next guy is someone who doesn't want to see this case solved. So you can count on me to help in any way I can help out. Help-wise? Mr. Dollar? Yes, Stanley, if that is indeed how they call you. Can you tell me something? Just what is insurance? Of course. Insurance 
is the act system or business of insuring property life for one person against loss or harm arising in specified contingencies as fire accident, death, death, or disablement in consideration of a payment proportionate to the risk involved. Uh, Mr. Pell, can you tell me what insurance is? Sure. It's a sort of guarantee you buy from the insurance company. If your bike is insured and it gets stolen... The insurance company will pay you to buy a new one. That's what I said. Yeah, but you said it with bigger words. These your wheels? Yep, this is my bucket of bolts, if that's what you mean. You like? Oh, cool, and it's a dandy. Well, take a close gander. Cellular phone, pre naugahyde seat, and a non-digital radio so you can actually tune in a station. It's a beaut, isn't it, Pat? Uh-huh. Yep. That's a terribly impolite way to get some attention. Sorry, but boy, the only thing that makes me sneeze like that is a cat. Well, that's Sheba right there in the back seat. Sheba goes everywhere with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Don't you, Sheba. <laughs> Would you at least point away from the dash? We'll be in touch with you, Mr. Dollar. We went back to MathNet HQ and started to work on the data we got from Mrs. Wilcoll. It's always good to organize the facts when trying to solve a problem. Miss Tuesday, Mr. Frankly, something awful has happened. Are you all right? I am, but... But what? My bike isn't. What's the matter with your bike? It's been stolen. 